What's up, Cincinnati Bengals talk? Welcome in. He's Andrew Fox Miller. I'm James Erpine. And, well, it's back to back to back to back. Drake, come up with a rap that goes back to back to back to back. Four nights in a row, live streams here on CBT. Thank you so much for joining us. You weren't ready for that, Andrew. You weren't ready for it. And I don't think a lot of people are ready for DJ Reader leaving today. And it sucks. There's no doubt it sucks. I'll explain why it sucks. I'll explain the Bengals' point of view, at least from my point of view. And it's not like they called and explained why DJ Reader signed with the Detroit Lions. So I can still give you the perspective of where I'm where I'm from and I think where they're coming from. At the same time, painful to watch DJ Reader walk. I think he was surprised that he ended up in Detroit, quite honestly. And uh, he does on a, 28, a nearly $28 million deal, $9 million guaranteed over the next two years. Andrew, I think we expected it after yesterday. We're just talking about it a ton and, and you just kind of come to grips with how things are feeling. But what was your reaction when you saw the DJ reader news? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> probably could have clipped it, but when we talked about it a little bit previously, but you know, we were up till whatever time last night, this morning, however you want to phrase it. Um, yeah. I pretty much said, and, and, and still believed up to that point that if he goes to Detroit, I just don't, I don't see him leaving. And even if the Bengals made the same offer, we, we don't know this, right? But like, if they did, he's there, he's in Detroit, something got him there. And everything that I've heard is that you become sort of enamored with the coaching staff, you become enamored with the, it's, it's just a culture that's going on there. We saw it, especially during the playoff run. So, um, it reminds me a lot of the Bengals in terms yeah. of the sort of culture there. I, I I felt like it would have been a good fit if the Bengals didn't uh, do everything they could to keep him there. And that brings me sort of a question, and maybe there's something in the chat here to you, James. I feel like there's a bit of a narrative here. Did the Bengals kind of – obviously they have their limit, but was it more limited than, say, the appetite of a Detroit Lions organization where the Bengals sort of knew the – you know, the fact that T.J. Ritter very likely won't be playing an entire season in 2024. How much of a factor was that? Were the Bengals a little bit uh, leery of that in the negotiations? Well, I, th I think I think the Lions were leery of it. Th that's, that's the biggest surprise to me. It's not that he signed with the Lions. It's what he signed for with the Lions. Because that's a one-year deal. That's what it is. And we don't we haven't seen the structure yet, but $9 million guaranteed. I guarantee you the Lions have protections in there to where they can get out of that second year if they need to. Right. And it's crazy because DJ Reader in this market healthy is probably an $18 million per year player where he's probably getting three for 54, right? Something like that where he's getting even more than he did when he signed a second contract with the Bengals. Look, I, I think there's a couple of things at play. You mentioned Detroit's culture. I actually don't think DJ fully bought into all of that. I think he was hoping, and even up until the last point, hoping to work something out here in Cincinnati. Yeah. I also think the Bengals have moved on. And we talked about pivoting earlier this week. And the moment they signed Sheldon Rankins, well, that's not pivoting. But the moment they decided they were going to bring in Tier Tart for a visit, on the same day that DJ Reader is visiting Detroit, well, it's pretty clear where their priorities are. And, and it's to get the younger, healthier nose tackle and the best nose tackle that's available that isn't named DJ Reader, who's coming off of a major injury. And I, I think there were concerns there about the injury, about the age. By the way, that doesn't mean DJ isn't going to be awesome. Because if the Bengals had paid DJ $27 million, $9 million guaranteed in over two years, I think everybody would have signed up for it. So let me be very, very clear here. I would not have been against that deal. I like the deal. I also think that the Bengals looked at it from a, a disciplined standpoint, like they do everything, right. an emotionless standpoint, where it's, all right, what should we do with this 30-year-old defensive tackle, and it'll be 30 on July 1st, coming back from a second major quad injury. He's had one on both legs now. They probably talked to the medical team. They probably looked at... Uh, a bunch of different things and they had their number and they stuck by it. And it felt like they stuck by it the entire time, the entire week. And that was that take it. Don't take it. That's fine. DJ reader said, I'm not going to take it. I'm going to go to Detroit. And they said, okay. And let him get on the plane and go. 
we joked all about the plane stuff a few nights ago. Let them get on the plane and go because they were already moving on. And, yeah. and we'll see if they get Tierra Tart. I don't know. I, I think there's some optimism there. We can get more into that. But I, I think that's how they view it. Now, is it a risk? Absolutely. Is it a risk to sign DJ? Absolutely. Time will tell. I don't think there is a right answer. I think emotion can get into it. And I'm not even reading the, I, I see the comments coming and I, I, I'm sure yeah. a lot of people are like, what the hell are you doing? You should have signed DJ. And I get it from the emotion side of things. And that, it's not a, the wrong side. It's certainly a side because he's a really, really good player. When healthy, he's a dominant player. <clears throat> but the Bengals clearly had some concerns with that because if it's just healthy DJ reader, of course they would have paid him that money. Nine million guaranteed. I mean, that's that's nothing. Absolutely nothing. Who would have thought that Joe Mixon would get more guaranteed money than DJ Reader? Not me. But the NFL is weird, <laughs> and it sucks. And and it's it's the reality for DJ right now. And I hope he bounces back. And I hope we see DJ Reader versus the Bengals in New Orleans next year. That would be fun. I want to quickly, first of all, Lionel, thank you for the uh, super chat here. I I. I'm going to double, I'm going to circle back. I want to see if, if you meant to put in a question or a comment, uh, feel free to do that. And I will try to laser focus on your name and ensure that I've addressed it. So thank you. I want to point out something with DJ reader quickly in that you talk about like, yeah, it sucks. And everyone wanted him here and we enjoyed and uh, from, about from that. somebody that sat Damn. there and say it again. Can you just let me get a word in? Oh, right. <laughs> Dan's uh, clearly very familiar with the channels. Um, my whole thing with with Reader is, aside from the fact that I, I loved Reader as a fan, but also, honestly, somebody that just sits and edits videos, whenever there was a locker room interview, you'd be like, hey, I got so-and-so. I'm like, cool. I got this person. Yeah. Like, even Jamar Chase is exciting. I look forward to it, but there's it's regular. DJ Reader wasn't always regular, but whenever he was being interviewed, I just enjoyed listening. I could have listened to him read me an audio book. Like, there's just something soothing about the way he talks, but there's also something humorous about him. He was great with, uh, in my opinion, from the out, looking at the outside with media. Um, he he kind of had a good sense of humor about him, and we have some really good videos out there, including the most recent one back in this past January. Go check it out if you haven't. It's a at this point, it's kind of bittersweet, but I think it still holds up because what I want to point out is if any one of you saw it out there, DJ Reader did his press conference, right? He spoke to the mm -hmm. media in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And I saw some comments, people quoting it on Twitter and other areas of social media saying, mm -hmm. Oh, there's some language in here, you know, about the Bengals, and you know, maybe he was a, a little you know, I don't want to say insulted, but let's just call it that for lack of a better way of putting it. There there was yeah. sort of this standoffishness about it when he was questioned about leaving. I didn't see that. I saw the same person that was interviewed in those locker rooms. I saw somebody that said the same words that he said in January 2024 that he just did on this press conference today, which was, listen, I don't worry about any of that. I go wherever fate takes me. He used his own religion. He said, I go wherever God is telling me to go. He said the same thing in January. And I felt like people were making a big deal about it when he did it in Detroit, as if it was sort of a slight at the Bengals. I don't think it was. My personal opinion, but I'm not an X's and O's guy. I enjoy that. But I'm a people person, and I love observing social commentary and, and the way people operate. And I, I witnessed that today. That's all. I think people get sensitive in general during the – it's like a breakup. I get it. It's what it is. Right, that's why people are in their feelings right now about mixing it all oh, one way or the other or all these things. Well, well the Bengals made a decision. It has nothing to do with anybody. Same thing. The Bengals made a decision with DJ, and so did the Lions. We'll see which one works out. But that's usually what happens. You hear DJ. You're right. He keeps it real. I said it on Lockdown earlier. The thing that I love most about DJ is, is he's a real one. He's going to tell you exactly how he's feeling, when he's feeling it, because he's feeling that way, and he's just honest with you. Yep. And that's awesome. And there aren't many people that I've covered or that I'm around that do that, are comfortable doing that. Certainly not 26, 25, what was he? Four years ago, he would have been 25. Not many 25 year olds willing to do that. And one of the things I remember about DJ in 2020, it's week two, the Bengals played it. It's Joe Burrow. It was his insane game against Cleveland where the Bengals had no business being in it. And he's balling on Thursday night in Cleveland. And they lose 35-30. And they get ran through. Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb, they're still running. at uh, It's Cleveland Brown Stadium now. It used to be First Energy. 
And DJ comes on the Zoom afterwards because of COVID and everything. And so we're in the press box and Zooms. It's not like we're talking in person. And he's like, this m- should not happen. This bleeping, bleeping, and bleep. He's like, this is not the standard. And he's just letting everyone know that he's like, what the hell did I sign up for? This is not what we are going to do. Because he's the nose tackle. He's a run stopper. And they got ran through. Like, it was crazy. And and so he's always been real. And that's that's why, that's part of why I believe that at 30, a second major injury, and it is a major one, that's why I look at it and I'm like, oh, yeah, he can recover. I think that's why there are people in the Bengals organization that look at it that way. But they didn't offer him what he was looking for. And I don't think the Lions did either. I don't think there was as, as big of a market for DJ is, as we would have expected. And if, if there was, by the way, then would Houston have went after him? Why didn't Cleveland go harder after him? Like there weren't a bunch of teams. It felt like it was down to Detroit and Cincinnati and, and the Lions – they got it done today, and I hope he plays well, but that it's it's part of the business, and it's a risk by the Bengals one way or the other. If they had signed him today that to that deal, it would have been like, all right, well, when's he playing? Is he going to be back for week one, week seven, week four? And I know he's optimistic about being back, but it's March. Yeah. And so until you're back, we don't know if you're going to be the same guy. And so there, there are a lot of question marks. I do believe he'll get back, but until you do it, there's there's a question there, and that's up to the organization. I want to point out we do have some super chats. I'm going to follow up on, and I think it, it, James, it does transition us nicely. Thank you, by the way. That's Not true. only I'm going to thank each and every one of you that are putting these super chats, but I appreciate so far from what I've seen here, it is kind of giving us a very good uh, flow to what we do want to address here. Speaking of what we are going to address, including what is in the super chat, are topics that we do want to get to. Um, hey, what's next? One of those topics. Where's Jake and his chest? I'm seeing those comments. I have not ignored them. I know. We'll talk about that. And uh, yes, so Lionel, by the way, my guy, I I appreciate that you you didn't have the the question or comment. I don't know if you meant to do this, but you did not have to pay for another choose. I was willing to give you. I was giving you a, a, a you know an opportunity to go back and and get that that last super chat accommodated. And but I appreciate you nonetheless. Um, anyway, so with that said, Tier Tart Mackay Beck. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I just started to cough a little bit. See Dan right the man. Then. That's what happens when I let Andrew yeah. talk for too long. I know. He the, can't, yeah, yeah. Can't I, do I, it. I, yeah, I talk for thirty seconds and I'm I'm already like, hoarse. Oh, the oh, uh, oh. yeah. I should be <laughs> quietly. Edit. I should yeah. I should be quietly making sure we can hear questions and news. Anyway, can you um, get the thumbnail ready for Beckton signing? Come on. Yeah. Right. Man. Exactly. Though that's queued up just in case. Just in case that is not uh, that's not insider speak. I'm just saying I it's, I do that with everything because I live off anxiety. So Florio wrote that stupid article about Tyler Eifert and Justin Jefferson earlier this week, which obviously Eifert was trolling. Right. You're going to see Florio write, Andrew Fox Miller <laughs> thinks Makai Becton is. <laughs> oh, I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to be on that map. I don't want to be on any map, but here Andrew I am. Andrew Fox Miller, Cincinnati based video editor. Right. For Cincinnati Bengals talk, a YouTube channel <laughs> believes the Bengals are in agreement with. <laughs> oh, and then the next time I, I try to go and oh film my. an interview at Paycor or something. They'll be like, oh, Andrew Fox Miller, that guy? Oh, it's Andrew Schefter, huh? And they'll just Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, you you trying to be- <laughs> He has to turn in his yeah, he has to turn in his uh phone before he can enter Paycor from here on yeah, out. Yeah, get get out of here, Andrew. Right. AFM Fox. Uh Tartan Becton signing. Uh question that question mark, not exclamation point in our case. Um yeah. Pleasant Hill Elementary class of seventy five. All right. Who day? Yeah, I uh, North Bend Road, I believe. I believe it's North Bend. I might be wrong on that. You're gonna uh, make me Google it. I know Pleasant no, Hill. I just got a picture. Of the Lino, I, I appreciate you, man. Uh, let's uh, let's start here. Last I checked, and you know, private flights and stuff. You never know what these guys that make seven figures are are doing. Even though they're not, it's not like they've banked yet because they're first contract guys. But they've still made money, especially Beckton. They were here as of a few hours ago. And so I still think they're in Cincinnati. I, I think that there's some optimism, and I wrote that for all Bengals. I think there's optimism around adding both of them. And part of it's pretty simple. Everything that the Bengals have done so far, we've discussed, and it's not just we, like every locked on Bengals, Cincinnati Bengals talk, every other outlet and Bengals podcast are paying attention to. Their offseason has kind of lined up with what we've said could happen in, in different scenarios. And very rarely does that happen. 
I think they know they got to, they have to land Makai Becton, that they have to land Tier Tart. Now, that doesn't mean you move mountains to get them. There are breaking points, but it's a really good fit. If you're Tier Tart, why the hell wouldn't you want to come to Cincinnati and, and pair up with Sheldon Rankins and pair up with BJ Hill and be part of this young core and, and work with Marion Hobby day to day and work with Lou Anarumo day to day? If you're Makai Becton, why would you not want to come to Cincinnati? And show everyone that you aren't a bust. Show everyone that the man that believed in you four years ago in, in Frank Pollock, th that you're still that player and that you had some injuries and you played for a crappy franchise that is full of itself and, and high right now on what what, what does Aaron Rodgers take? What is that? Ayahuasca or whatever? What, what is that, it? One of many things, yes. Yeah, Definitely not like, like you know anything with aspartame or anything, but yes, it, ayahuasca. It, is that what it's called? I, I, I really don't remember. It is ayahuasca, yes. That, okay, that so I got thing. that right. Yeah. I'm shocked I got that right. I Wow, that's the, the shock. Of, but the point is, is Makai Becton <laughs> has dealt with injuries in crappy situations. I think this is a perfect situation. And so Speaking why wouldn't you want to come to Cincinnati? I, I, I think that's that's the element. I was thinking about this because they, they went out to dinner tonight and you can see it on social. It's out, there it is. So. I'm glad you said that. Why uh, did you just, why did you sit on that for so long? I was like, am I not supposed to say we all saw it, but like, I, I no, get that you're trying no, to like, they, you, you, they I went out go to with dinner what I know, but I didn't want to like say it when they were there and people go there. No, I get that. But they, like they, on this, they were out moment, to dinner street. tonight. Yeah. And I was thinking back to like the Riley reef dinner and, and you remember back a few years ago. And now I'm thinking like, man, these dinners probably feel much different now. Because the Bengals are like a legit contender. Joe Burrow is a superstar. And I'm sure they feel, not that he wasn't a star then, but he was a promising rookie coming off of a torn ACL. It just feels much, much different now than it did then. Mm -hmm. And I think the Bengals probably had to sell themselves a little bit to those free agents when they were going after them. I'm not sure that's the case anymore. I'm really not. And so we'll see. But uh, getting those two deals done, I'm optimistic. I think that there's some optimism on both sides, Bengals-wise and on the free agent side. So we'll see if they can get it done with TR Tart Mackay back then. It uh it would be good because I think it would cap off a busy, busy week and a a promising and beneficial week for this Bengals roster. I flashed this up really as you were talking through this, as we're talking through this. Sean, yep. uh, appreciate you and adding a little color to the conversation, adding a little color. Oh my God, did my mic just boost up? Are you hearing that? It did. Yeah, it did boost. Oh my it's God. Okay. It sounds I, I actually, good. I touch, this is like when I owed you or you owed me, sorry, I should yeah. say the uh, bottle of bourbon for accidentally. I got, I got you that. Bourbon. It's opposite. Um, the bargain shopping approach. I, I can understand that general concern in regards specifically to Becton and Tart not moving the needle. I, I can understand that. I can respect that. I, I certainly see why someone would think that. Um, yeah. But I think James kind of laid out specific to Beck. I feel like he gets the most sort of like heat out of all this. But and I understand why. Again, yeah. But everyone's high on Mims in the draft. We've talked about this, James. I don't know if we talked about it on camera, but like we've talked about it personally. And like this dude is essentially not quite, but essentially the measurables of a Mary Smith. Like but, like it is like it. It's it's similar. No, with I experience agree with you. like. Mm -hmm. To a degree, I, I and I'm not saying we're going to throw everything at this guy. I don't know what the numbers would look like if they sign him, but I, I like it in the sense that they could grab somebody and you have somebody, and yeah. obviously you're going to do something in the draft. Yeah, I agree with you, and I'm just looking here. I'll just name some of them. Cam Fleming, 32 years old. I would be okay with it, but that's clearly a bridge. Donovan Smith is only a left tackle. He's 31. Josh Jones, they didn't like him in the draft. They took T. Higgins over him. They took Logan Wilson over him. And so I don't think they're in on him. Jermaine Illuminar, I would have been in on him at 29. He's with the Giants now. Jonah Williams, we know he signed. All right, Mike Nwenu, he signed. Trent Brown is still out there, 31 years old. I'll get to him in a second. Tyron Smith would be my number one target, has a relationship with Frank, is 33, only wants to play left tackle, is not signing here to play right tackle. Okay, so it's either Trent Brown, Makai Becton, or there, there just aren't many options. And so I'm not saying that Makai Becton is even going to start for the Bengals, but he might. And of these guys, he has the highest ceiling of all of them. Let me make sure. Outside of Tyron Smith, just to be clear. But outside of Tyron Smith, he has the highest ceiling. Now, is it, 
Is it likely that he hits that ceiling in his full football potential now after four years and injuries and all of those things? Maybe not. And it isn't actually, it's probably like 10%, but if it's a 10%, oh my God, he's awesome. A 45%, eh, he plays one year and then he signs elsewhere and he's just okay. Or he's a backup. The answer is probably somewhere in the middle. I think Makai Becton could beat out a rookie potentially for that starting right tackle job. I think he would bring some stability. He's 25 and he's someone that again, I think was in a really crappy situation and had some injuries. And say it out loud. Do you think the Jets are a good franchise? Do you, do you think the Jets are run well? One of my good friends is a Jets fan. I make fun of him all the time. What a poor decision he made. What a poor decision he made to back the Jets when you know he was 10 or 12 or whatever it was. But his whole life, they've stunk. And so I think that it could work. And for all those people that wonder, like, all oh, right, how's Frank Pollock? What's he? This is a good test because Becton does have talent. Becton is is very, very talented. Becton would be a top 20 pick if he was a rookie again. would be a top 20 pick in this draft. He would probably go top 12 or 13. He was the 11th pick in 2020, and it was a loaded draft class. So I think it's worth the dart throw. doesn't mean it's going to work, but if you get him for one year, $5 million, or what I would do, Andrew, two years, $14 million, I would say I want to give you the Jermaine Illuminor deal. Veteran tackle money for two years because – even if he stinks, all right, so he's your backup. A backup tackle for $7 million per year is reasonable, but what if he hits? And if he hits and he's really, really darn good, now right. you have a tackle starting for you. For and then years. what? You're so, giving no, I, him enough guarantees to essentially cover that first year. And Yeah, and I'm bullish. I'm just bullish on the idea of grabbing a, a young offensive lineman. For exa- let, Let's just use it. What if Penny Sewell had struggled in Detroit? I, I know he's one of the best tackles in the league. I know it's that's where Makai was. That's who he was being talked about as. And injuries, motivation, all of those things are question marks to a degree. But he's got the talent, and so can you get it out of him? And taking a one-year flyer on a guy like that, and I do think it would probably be one year, that is worth it. Uh, so as far as moving the needle, there aren't any right tackles remaining. Zero that move the, the needle. And unless you think Jonah Williams or Mike Nwenu move the needle, right. there aren't any. As far as defensive tackles, sure, you can make the argument they should have went after Christian Wilkins. They were never going to give him $90 million guaranteed or whatever it was. It just it, it was a, a pipe dream. And the defensive tackle market was much, much busier than I think anyone anticipated. And, and the top guys were were gone in a flash. And that was really just Christian Wilkins because Justin Matabike and oh, and Chris Jones, they both signed before free agency began. David, by the way, no, Jonah Williams went to Arizona. Uh, sorry Arizona, with them. $30 milli. That's right. Um, I'm going to get a couple more super chats here. Your wishful thinking signing trade draft pick. Are we going to treat that as an and mm. situation or are we going to categorize? Uh, no, well, let's I, do I, I do want right. to kind of talk about signing a who's left, I suppose. Draft pick. I'm still. I, I, got I have. I, yeah, oh. I, I know you got me, but I'm like, I, I, if this were directed at each of us, I, I'm just going to put this out there. We talk about draft picks. Like, I am the. I don't want to say that I'm indecisive, but I'm just the type of person that. I, until we, until you put me up against the wall, until I have to absolutely make a decision, it's very difficult me, for me to do it. So if you're telling me that I have over a month to figure something out, it's very hard for me. Okay. That said, let's go on signings. Like, let's take, let's just for, for the, for this exercise, we're going to take Becton's out of the picture. Uh, Tart's out of the picture. Let's, yeah. Let's assume. No, that's fine. Yeah. Let's assume okay. they sign both of them. Okay, fine. Let's assume they sign both of them. All right. So wishful thinking, not pie in the sky, because obviously Tyron Smith would be pie in the sky, right. which I like pie, but not in the sky. All right. Um, as far as uh, as signing goes, to me, it's it's Calais Campbell. Calais Campbell's your age, not quite. You're like 49, but he's you know he's pushing it a little bit. He's like 38, 39. Like he's he's around some of the Bengals like older coaches now because they do have some young coaches on the staff but he's like dan pitcher's age zach taylor and i say older tongue-in-cheek because they have coaches much older than that but yes calias campbell is is would be my guy because to me if you add tier tart and you have this this trio of bj hill and you have tier tart and then you bring in sheldon rankins well guess what calias campbell can do he can rotate with those guys and still play at a really really high level 
and be a difference maker and you get him to the playoffs and you say, Kalias, let's go win one. And he's that type of dude. So he's 38. I get it. 38 years old. I don't give a damn. He can still play. And so that's the guy that after they get Rankins officially done, even though it's done, after they get, if they are able to, T.R. Tart, you have B.J. Hill. You add this fourth piece that can be a rotational piece and be a problem in the fourth quarter on big downs when you need it, is good against the run, is a good pass rusher, is a proven veteran that makes a difference. That's the guy. That would be a wishful thinking signing that would make, that would be a, a real nice ad. In, in the Bengals aren't going to replace DJ Reader. You can't find that, that type of run stuffer. But what they can do is be better, and they're going to be better if they had T.R. Tart in this area, which is getting pressure up the middle. And Kalias Campbell would do both at this age on a rotational standpoint. So there we go. Kalias Campbell it is for me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on. I don't think they were directing me anyway. If I felt motivated, I'd tell you. But I want to get through some of these chats because there's some great ones here. The trade uh, would be getting anything for Jackson Carmen, and the draft pick would be <laughs> uh, Brock Bowers. Wherever that is is what you're saying. Like, however I get to him is how I, I get. No, at 18. They're not trading up. Let's be real. They're not trading up for a tight end. Come on. What What are you reading? I, I'm t I was answering that that three. Oh, that I'm three sorry. My, my bad. Still. Like I flashed that up, and then you started to say that, and I'm like, "What are we?" Bengals doing? need to entertain trading T as the same agent as Bates, and this is a loaded wide receiver class. Yeah, I, I, I think one, I would be, and I would have called the Titans, and clearly they're willing to spend a lot of money at wide receiver, man. Ooh, fifty million guaranteed for Calvin Ridley, and I really like Calvin Ridley. I think I was weirdly high on Calvin Ridley all season. <laughs> and uh, in this offseason, I also thought he was going to get like 13 million a year. And so he got a huge deal. Good for him. I uh, I would entertain trading T. And I told T this, and I've said it in videos, and, and I'll say it here. I told him in the season, I was like kind of talking to him. It was after they were eliminated and uh, just talking to him. And I brought it up, and I'm like, what do you think is going to happen? You ain't hitting free agency. I told him that straight. I was like, there's no way you become a free agent. And, and I was like, I wouldn't tag you and keep you. I would tag you and trade you. But the the interesting part of this now is how deep it is at wide receiver in the draft. So what's his value? Keenan Allen's going for a fourth round pick. Mike Williams has zero value and gets released. Part of that, a lot of that has to do with this contract, but it's still true. Hollywood Brown signing for $7 million right as we go live with the Chiefs can make up to $11 million. That's a first round pedigree. And I get it, T. Higgins is better than those guys. But if you're offering me a three for T Higgins, well then, hey T, you're playing on the tag, my man. And so I, I do wonder the offers, but if you got a substantial, if you get a first round pick for T Higgins, I think you'd have to seriously consider it because that's, that's a key piece. And uh, even with the compensatory stuff that happened earlier this week where they get an extra pick in the top 100, I, I would consider it. So no, I, I don't think the Bengals will trade T, but I do think that uh, if I was GM, I would be, even shopping him a little bit, I would have shopped him at the combine. The problem is now you clear that $21.8 in cap space. Well, free agency, we're already in like the third phase. So who are you spending it on? Why are you trading him? Does it actually make you better? It's probably not going to make you better anymore. I want to flash this one up quick. Or, oh, I meant to flash up a different one up. That's kind of waiting uh, chronological. Oh. But okay. Uh, yeah. Signing back to open up the idea of drafting a defensive tackle at 18. Uh, Depends on who's there at defensive tackle. There's really only one at 18, right? I mean, like, what, what are we dealing with here? Yeah, I, I think a lot of people think two. And I get it. But to me, it's just one. I think it's it's Murphy. It's Byron Murphy. I almost said Miles Murphy. It's Byron Murphy out of Texas. I think Tavondre Sweat's probably an early to late third rounder. He's certainly a day two pick at this stage. And Johnny Newton's the other one that a lot of people are talking about. And I, I think he could be like late first. Like if you traded T, I think that could be the Johnny Newton pick where he goes like pick 28 to, to 44, like somewhere in there where he doesn't make it to your second round pick. And I know that sounds insane that he falls that far because you look at these simulators and he's going. But just the vibes I got at the combine and not from the Bengals, just in general, NFL vibes, talking to NFL people. I think the NFL is a little lower on him than, than the consensus. So... I think defensive tackle is on the table, of course, especially if Byron Murphy is there. At the same time, I think there 
at best, even if you want to paint a rosy picture and say Johnny Newton's in there, there's two defensive tackles that they would consider at 18, regardless of who they're playing at offensive line. So offensive line is certainly the favorite, but I do think defensive line's in the running. It's just not as likely. I'm going to fly through this one because there's simply nothing there. First of all, thank you, Rick, for the for the super chat here. I Again, if I, I feel like there have been issues, and it's – Certainly nothing I can control, but I do feel like after last night, there were times where people would put in a super chat and there would be no question or comment, but then they'd follow up like, hey, something's up. I meant to say this. So if you did, I'm going to try to watch for you. I don't know that I can go back and, and find you quickly right now, but just a heads up. All right. Appreciate you. Then nonetheless, if you just meant to send something our way, I absolutely uh, do thank you for that. Shin Godzilla, hey, returning uh, super chat viewer, fan. In the draft, would you agree we'll be going trenches in both rounds? What in either scenario, mm. one and two? Uh, good free agency fiction issue. Yeah, well, I mean, look, I mean that's the issue, right? Like trenches is the it's top of everyone's mind at this point. It's like if you were putting together any team, whether it's like somebody just trying to put together a fantasy football team, or whether somebody that's trying to put together an ultimate team on Madden. Like it's it's the biggest thing that we all talked about heading into this offseason, and mm. arguably especially on offensive line, but trenches defense as well. Like the one thing that really needs to be at least give, – give me something that feels like we're just somewhat status quo, like enough to get to the draft. But, okay, talking about the draft well, in general, if we don't do that, what do we do? Well, well, that's that's what Becton is, right, I would imagine, if they can get him. Sure. And, and, and maybe you think, all right, well, they need to sign a guard and, you know, maybe you go after a Dalton Risner. I don't, I don't think so, but you could – and add a backup guard. I, I would. I would try to add a backup interior lineman as well. And I, I think that's that's what's interesting is maybe they just do that in the draft and they think they can get a center guard type guy that can back up those spots because that's what I would want. I would want to find someone that can play center and guard if possible and because just have a little more depth there. And, and so we'll see. But overall, I think offensive line is the most likely outcome at pick 18 because you have all of the offensive tackles, of course. You have Jackson Powers Johnson, who I think could be in consideration as the one interior lineman. A couple others that are, are offensive tackles in college, but could maybe shift the guard, shift inside long term that the Bengals may consider. But I also think tight ends in the mix with Brock Bowers. Wide receiver, probably not unless one of the big three fall. And that's not going to happen because the Chargers are definitely taking a receiver now after trading Keenan Allen. And and so yeah, I think those are the two obvious positions. Is it, it Offensive tackle, one defensive tackle. I said two positions, but there's more. One tight end. And then I think there are a lot of cornerbacks, like multiple cornerbacks that they could consider as well, including uh, the, the kid from Toledo that I really, really like. And uh, his name, Quinion Mitchell. His name always escapes me. But, man, I love him because he's the small school kid that no one really knew about, and he was just locked down. And then he goes to the senior bowl, shows he can play press coverage against – elite receivers, high-end receivers, and then he goes to the combine and just dominates. And it's like, oh, man, he gives me Sauce Gardner vibes, not stylistically, but like the small school kid who's actually talented enough to play anywhere and can dominate. And right. uh, so, yeah, I, I think if he somehow made it to 18, he would be in the mix. But there's not a – This is th There's line, not a ton chat, of – Thank you, Domino. But this is in line with what we're talking about here. I'm just – Yeah, what are, what, what are they doing to protect Joe? Well, they're talking with Makai Becton right now, and they're trying to get him done. I, I they are, they, and by the way, it, for it, they and it seems like beyond front office are trying to talk with Makai Pacton. <laughs> sure, yeah, for a steak dinner, get, right? Yeah, and 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 so that's a big piece. I mean, Makai Becton, if the Bengals, and it's four years later, I get it. It's been worlds different, but if the Bengals had somehow traded up, they they take Burrow one. And then they trade up and get Makai Becton from that 33rd pick where they took T and it worked out. But they trade up and get Makai Becton. People would have been like, oh my God, look at what the Bengals have done. It is insane. And so I just think it's a nice dart throw. Now, that doesn't mean that's it. I think they, they know this draft is historic from an offensive line perspective, certainly an offensive tackle. I'd be willing to guarantee that they take an offensive lineman, probably an offensive tackle, but certainly an offensive lineman, with one of their first two picks, guaranteed. And we're, what, six weeks away from the, the draft, something like that? Yeah, six weeks away from the draft. 
I just think that they're going to do it, whether it's pick 18, and if that doesn't work, then pick 49. Are there some scenarios where that doesn't work, where Brock Bowers falls and then they have a defensive lineman that they really like? There's some scenarios where that happens, but I think it's really highly likely that they take an offensive lineman in the draft and probably multiple. So what are they doing to protect Joe? They're trying to get a former first round pick that dealt with a lot, but has a ton of talent still and is probably entering his prime, certainly physically entering his prime. And uh, hopefully it, the Bengals can uh, also nail the draft from an offensive line perspective, because that's where it's going to come from. If the Bengals are going to get a quality offensive line year in and year out. They have to be able to start drafting these guys and not drafting Jackson Carmen when Creed Humphrey's on the board, which still makes me about as mad as any move that they've ever made, including passing on Tyler Lockett for Jake Fisher, which led to a bunch of mistakes down the line in the draft and, and as a, a, a team. So I digress. You're muted, big dog. Yeah, well, you know, that I usually do that when I know you're you're on your one of your tangents. Mm -hmm. um, tangents. The uh, I want to I want to clear through some of these super chats because there are some great overall chats that there some of these are back to the beginning i i want to call out quickly um so first of all thank you devin um if you're just showing your appreciation for watching this uh i appreciate you and if you meant to ask something or say something i'll try to circle back and, and catch something in case it didn't go through but I'm doing the best i can on that one the uh mr whisper appreciate you does a short deal for gaseki make you think they're targeting tight end high in the draft second round i'm going to put out my theory and james you can just tell me if i'm completely off base here or if you can confirm one way or another um first of all history has shown that they seem at least in zach taylor's tenure history has shown that this is kind of how they deal with tight ends especially ones that pretty much aren't going to get a long, when I say long-term, relative, right? A three-year mm -hmm. deal with with a team. It just seems like, at least at this position, they tend to bring on people that get an opportunity, they prove themselves, and again, history has shown they go elsewhere. Um, I don't know that they would have thought otherwise in this scenario, and they seem to like Gusecki, but who, by the way, seems to want to really come here loves being here from what we saw from the uh the news conference so okay i think it's the weather is it the weather it's a joke yeah the i mean it, uh, you say weather and i i I'll, i will i will just throw this up there by the way there's i mean tornadoes i i by the way whoever's midwest in general i don't know what's going on out there i've been trying to watch the weather and i lost track since we started this stream so if i need to take shelter i'm already in my basement but i will make sure i go get my kids who are sleeping right now Anyways, <laughs> moving past the tornadoes. <laughs> it, it, Mike Gesicki, the reason you signed him to a one-year contract is pretty simple. He hasn't produced the past couple of years. I think that has a lot to do. You had a regime regime change. And this matters. That's why I talk about Beckton. I'm not just defending him. I, I do think that culture matters. I, I think that being in a stable environment matters. I think there were a lot of talented Bengals players that they drafted in the 90s that walked in and the culture sucked and it was, they had no chance ever of succeeding and being the player that they thought they could be or, or hitting their full potential. And that happens a lot. And with Mike Gesicki, he's not a perfect tight end. I'm not saying he's Gronk or he's going to block like Drew Sample even, but he's a special pass catcher. And he went to New England last year. They basically had Andrew Fox Miller throwing the ball in New England. It was awful. The offense stunk. He went there because his former college coach was there and I'm pretty sure there was some lore of Bill Belichick, and it's like, oh, yeah, I can go catch passes from Mac Jones, and they don't have a true number one receiver, and I'm going to get a bunch of opportunity, and it was the it was a dumb, dumb decision from a production standpoint. So the reason why Gesicki gets a one-year deal is because he hasn't produced, and I think he's the best tight end the Bengals have had, dot, 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 dot. I mean, in a while. Certainly as a pass catcher, certainly for this offense. He's taller. Um, a better receiving threat, a better route runner than Hayden Hurst, better contested catch skill set than Hayden Hurst. I, I don't think he's the blocker that Uzama or Hurst or Sam, I, he's not that. But he showed an eagerness to and willingness to show that today, mentioned that went out of his way. And two, I just think in the red zone, I think in the second and third levels of this, this offense uh, against opposing defenses, linebackers, safeties, 
nickel cornerbacks without Tyler Boyd. I think he's going to play in the slot a decent amount. Mike Gusecki is going to be a problem, and he's going to help them become more explosive. He's not going to do a ton after the catch. That doesn't matter because when he's going up the seam against a a five foot nine nickel, basically has me covering him. He's going to rise up and catch it. When he's going up against a safety in the red zone, and Joe Burrow sees a tight window opportunity, he's going to trust Mike to go get it, and Mike is going to go get it more times than not. So. I love that they have another option there. I think he's going to have a career year. And, heck, Tanner Hudson had 39 receptions last year, Andrew. You, you asked me that earlier this week. Mm-hmm. And I, I think Mike Gesicki easily, like, easily gets to 50 catches and six touchdowns. And I think that estimate is going to go higher the, the farther we get and the closer we get to the season. Devin, thank you for your super chat. What do you think of uh, Mitchell? Why does he from Texas? Uh, number five. What's his first name? I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Oh, my God. Number five. You're talking about Adani Mitchell. Yeah, Adani. Uh, AD. AD. Uh, anyway, he's projected. I guess he could be. I mean, he should be there at 18. He would right? be your 18th. He would be your yeah. 18th. It's not going to be that right. 49. Well, yeah, no, no. He's at maybe early second, but yeah, not going to be there. Yeah. What would do you, you take him? Not at eighteen. I, I like him. I, I think the Bengals. I mean, yes. are the, there's there's not a an NFL analyst, beat writer, whatever you want to call me, on the planet that likes receivers more than me. I think the Bengals are in a weird spot in the first round where they're going to miss out on all of the top guys, even if like the best case scenario, Roma Dunze falls, he's not making it to eighteen, right? If if some reason Harrison or neighbors fell, they're well, they're not even making it out of the top eight, right? And probably not. So if you miss out on those guys, it's Brian Thomas, it's Mitchell. And I think the Bengals will say, okay, we got to take – there's an offensive lineman here that we have ahead of them. Or there's Quinion Mitchell, the corner out of Toledo. Or a Byron Murphy is available. Or – and I could go on and on about guys like that. I think there's multiple corners. I think there's a bunch of offensive tackles. There's at least one, one defensive tackle. And so I, I just don't think wide receivers really in play. Now, if they trade it back, if they're at 23, wide receiver could certainly be in play. I don't think Mitchell or Brian Thomas would be ahead of Brock Bowers on their board either, just to throw that one out there as well. I'm going to throw out, uh, let's see here. I would go trenches in the first two rounds, wide receiver like Johnny Wilson or t- tight end. like. Okay. Yeah. So, I, yeah. It, here's, and this is just logic in general, like, we need to get shirts. I'm going to get with Doug from Rivertown because Tell it's me, that time of what's year. What's your idea? It's that, it's that time of year. The What, the position I, I of the player? I will say for every draft, yes. You draft players, not positions. And I was, I love I was the giving you the reverse of, treatment, but yes. I, I, you draft players, not positions. And I, I get it. I just said I love wide receivers, and that's fine. But I also wanted Tyler Linderbaum in 2022. That was my guy. <laughs> I, like, I'm not laughing it, at you for the Linderbaum. I'm just center. laughing at some of the edits I did of you uh, talking about Oh, going on constantly. and on. And I yeah. knew the Bengals weren't taking them, but I wanted them to take them because they should take them. And by, by draft day, I had a pretty good feeling that they weren't. You never know, right. but you can read you can read the room. I thought they were really high on Dalton Kincaid, and they were. But it's not like I fall in love with the shiny weapon every single year. But if Brock Bowers is there at 18, this awesome – just freak alien that is just great after the catch and can do everything you would want him to do. Well, I'm not going to say, oh, Bengals, you shouldn't take him and get Joe Burrow another one. I'm not going to say, let's say Malik Neighbors fell. He won't. Let's say it. There isn't a trench player I would take over him. None. Zero. Kidding me? He's awesome. And so I, I don't want to do that to the Bengals because what if they have Troy Franklin out of Oregon? What if they have him at 17th on their board, the wide receiver? And they think he can be the, their next complement to Jamar Chase and a stud receiver like T. Higgins, and they can let T. walk next year. Should they not take Troy Franklin at 49? I, I just don't view it that way ever. There will never be a draft. I didn't view it that way when Joe Burrow was drafted and they had 52 weaknesses, and I won't view it that way now. Some will say, well, you're going to get Joe killed. And that's not true. It's when you decide to, to address the trenches, you get those picks right. And I'll give you, I mentioned the Jackson Carmen pick. There were a ton of offensive linemen that ended up being way better than him when they took him. But let's use another one, Akeem Adenogy in 2020. And I like Akeem. 
Guess who was on the board when they took Akeem Adeniji? It was a fine dart throw. You, you take it. He's sixth round. Mike and Wenu. Sometimes you just got to get the line. You got to get the picks right. And, right. and that's what the Bengals haven't done. And that's why they are where they are. And so we'll see if they can get it right, whether it's first round, second round, fourth round. They need to add offensive line help. I agree. But I don't want to pigeonhole them into just one time. Here's the time to do it because I, I don't think it's that simple. James, I'm going to go through a few more super chats, and we have some, a lot of other chats. I'm going to probably do rapid fire after that because I, I'm not saying we're going to end soon, but we are thinking about ending, and there's a lot to cover here. So I need you, I need you to focus. You ready, James? I'm ready. Let's go. Okay. Like I need to oh. look at me. Look at me. I'm not looking at you. See, when no, I look into the I, camera, I, I can't I, see. Look you. in the camera. That's what I need. That's what I need. I, oh, you're close. Wait, wait, no, no, stop. Look at me again, quickly. Oh, you're drinking. It's going to mess with me. Wait, I need to see. I can see, and I'll know if you're ready. What? Yeah, you're, it, it, you're, you're, you're kind of ready. You're ready enough. I, I, I know when you're ready, and that wasn't the ready face. But okay, let's go. Um, can you share what you know about the dinner? And oh, sorry. Uh, we covered that. All right. I thought I skipped somebody on the super chat. Nope, we're good. Uh, can you share what you know about the dinner? We, we did talk a little bit about it, but um, was Joe I'm not there? Gonna... All right. What time is it? They can't still be at dinner, right? It's got to be over, right? Hold on. Let me just look at the hours of the place. I'm not trying to hide <laughs> on that. Everybody, I mean. All right. It was... They close at 10. Okay. okay. All right. So, yeah. they. I mean. Uh, they went to precinct. Uh, I believe Joe Burrow was there. Tier Tart and Mackay Becton were both there. There you go. And Frank Pollock. I don't know for sure Joe was there. I don't have a Joe cam. I'm pretty sure Joe Burrow was there. Frank Pollock was there. Yes. Well, the Joe cam we can't use on since I bang up stock, but yeah. Good Lord. You can get me in trouble, man. It's, this is my words. Everyone knows who I am now. I'm in trouble because... Never mind. Um, yeah. Yeah. Look. This is kind of the move at this point, right? Like, you got to get him. Got to get him. I understand, but it's like the same thing with what s several years ago at this point. Like, right? We had who, who all was at that dinner? By the way, I don't want to get into the history. I know I said somewhat rapid fire, but uh, this was twenty one. Was that the one? Was that the move? All of a sudden, you needed uh, Riley Reef. Like, we had to have him, right? Like, we're Stake Burrow. That was a, that was the move. Yeah, this you're right. This is the move. This is what they do. They go to precinct. That's the spot, and uh, hopefully they can get it done. And and these two guys are would give them a big boost, no doubt. Um, Sean, why are the Bengals still unwilling to trade mid to late round picks for proven bets? Who? This is super chat. So who? Like who's the guy? That's yeah. do you want Keenan Allen? Is that it? Like you know what I mean? Like I I don't know. It, not I'm only with who you. I'm with you, by the way, and I want them to be more aggressive at the deadline. Like that's something that I it really frustrates the hell out of me, because if you have a weakness, go get it. And they're going to have a weakness at the deadline this year. That's just what happens. There'll be injuries or something, and you look up and they have ten picks now. And so, I do think they'll be aggressive in in the draft to try to trade up. And who knows? Maybe there is a veteran that they want. I, I just who? I, I don't really have a name for you right now of someone that they should definitely go after. Appreciate you, Sean. And then Jamie, we thank thank you as well. Um, yeah. O line picks. We talked. We we touched upon this. I don't know if it was last night. That was a blur. Uh, maybe the night before. But either way, getting the O line picks wrong, coaching, scouting, players. I, I'd throw that in mm -hmm. there. I know I didn't. I didn't submit the super chat, but I'd throw that in there as well. So yeah, I, I know may, maybe this is centered a bit around Frank Pollock as well. That's been asked about a lot. But let's go with this really quickly. Yeah, I, I think. I think it's a handful of things, but you look at the draft picks that they've used since Pollock got here, and I don't think you can blame it on that. I just think that the one premium pick they used was on Jackson. And Jackson's not going to work anyway. Like, I'm really down on Jackson, and I'm not trying to be mean on him or pile on. He just hasn't been good, and they've given him opportunities, and they've tried. And that's just, that, that's it. That's where he's at. So we'll see what happens if he makes the team. Uh, Deontay Smith was a, another one. You take him in the fourth round of that draft. Tyler Shelvin, another one. You take him in the fourth round of that draft. If they hadn't traded back from 38 to 46, Christian Barmore was right there. There's your defensive tackle. There's your beast next to the DJ Reader. And they traded back, which is fine, because they could have traded back and gotten a Creed Humphrey. They could have traded back and still addressed 
uh, offensive tackle. I think Sam Cosme was still there. I, I, I would have to look, but there's a long list of guys that they could have gotten, and they've just gotten these picks wrong. A lot of people pile on Cordell Volson and say, oh, well, Cordell, you can't play Cordell. He's the best draft pick they've had offensive line-wise since Jonah. And he's a fourth rounder that I didn't know I didn't know who he was because he was from North Dakota State when he got drafted. And I had to look him up and learn about him and all of those things. I think he's actually exceeded my expectations. And I get it. You want to upgrade that spot. You want to get better. Hopefully he does develop because I think the Bengals will continue to roll with him this year. But man, like that can't be your hit. And I'm not trying to be mean to him, but when you, you look at that and you say, that's the hit. And even Jonah, you say, that's the hit. We played five years for you. And you were never seriously considering giving him a second deal. So at least the second long-term deal that everyone felt comfortable with. So it's it's tough. It's tough because they just haven't had the hits. And the premium picks they have used have been few and far between. By the way, I was on Team Jamar, not Team Sewell. I think they got it right. But they got to get that second pick right, and they didn't. They took Jackson Carmen instead of a, a player that would have been able to help. And who knows, if they had gotten that pick right, maybe we're having a different conversation right now. I don't think Tart was on the the knee drop thing. I don't remember who it was here. Oh wait, uh, honest is honest fan right on this? Was it Simmons? Uh, I think it was Simmons. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Simmons. I'd have to go back and check. I obviously am not confirming. By the way, way Ted another, would but... Ted would forgive Justin Simmons the moment he walked in the building. If oh, hey, Brian Callahan, if you want to send Justin Simmons to Cincinnati, that's no problem. By He'll the way, near, Higgins. just under 800 people here. If anyone is going to the just uh, over. Oh wow, that just updated it. My words made that up. What what was that? Some weird. <laughs> anyway, the uh, the St. Taddy's Day on Sunday, St. Patrick's Day, at the Fulling Warehouse. For those of you who are local here in Cincinnati, I'm not here to plug it. I'm just throwing out the fact that James and I intend on being there. So if we are there, <laughs> feel free to stop by and say hi, chat with us. Probably more Andrew's so. Andrew's going to get tatted up. Andrew's no, getting I'm tatted. J- James, James is going to be busy. I, I I told him the other. I told him was it today? Nah, like he's going to be at the big kids table. I'll be out roaming around nah. with you know the civilians. Um, so you don't you don't know what you're talking about. There is no table. I, I'm just I, it was figurative. Perhaps I don't know. What do you want from me? No, I, I'm um, just that, that plan went out the window. But I'll be drinking. So you're picking me up. Uh, again every time and then i gotta take you to mcdonald's <laughs> afterwards God. hey man you don't even want to know I, i'll tell you this dude's order i've literally got the receipt it's long as hell and two line items are me and james laughed that i only ordered what, what, what was it well, it was 20 I, I got i got i think i think i got a uh it was like a six <laughs> It was like a six piece nugget and a small fry. And you looked at that receipt after you had ordered like three McDoubles and like whatever else you got. And I you think were, it was you, 20 nuggets. You were in tears looking at the receipt. The fact you're like, I got you covered for driving for me for being DD. And I got like a six piece and a small fry at like 2 a.m. And you, it was the best it was thing like ever to you. $18 and you got that and I got the rest. <laughs> Did I get two triples? No, were they it was, tri- it, it was. It was it was McDoubles. It was at least two okay. or three, and then it was, it was also like, like some sort of nuggets. nugget. It, like it was fry. It was like it was a whole. It was a buffet. Um, you know what's funny is is so. I remember eating like, <laughs> I, I put I put on whatever, and you're driving home, and you know I'm eating my food, and I, I eat ten nuggets, and I think I finished the burgers, and I'm like I could save the nuggets, and I look, and I'm like. And I eat the rest of. Them. <laughs> yeah, you didn't even eat sauce. You just dipped it in your tears. You were so upset by that order. No ketchup, baby, ketchup. <laughs> um, oh no. With DJ Reader out, considering how bad the D was versus the run last year, do you think the team has tackled off season correctly? Well, I mean, we're, we'll see. I mean, right, we're not done yet, but. Uh, well- I think that the entire defense in this is okay. Yeah, if that. we're talking defense back, yeah, if we're like the shift, I suppose potentially, right? Well, yeah, we haven't talked a lot about Vaughn yet. We're an hour in. Um, well, some people well, brought it up. I, I had it queued up. I apologize for those. Uh, no, like, you, no, you, not you. you. I'm not apologizing to you, you Mister Three McDoubles and whatever you got going on over there. Hey, man, want me to DD? Uh, hey, hey, these super. Hey, appreciate all your super chats because it might be paying for an Uber, so I don't have to drive James. After the St. Taddy's Day event, we'll see. Do not give me drinks. This is You're, more than enough at St. Taddy's Day. Whatever, dude. All right, pick me up at like eleven thirty. All right. 
eleven fifteen. I, I need time to gym first. That's why. That's why I can do the McDonald's. Anyways, I think uh, I, I think that they they have to get better against the run. Of course, it goes without saying. They were bad against the run with DJ, and and that's the correct the point. And I get why people are saying, "Oh, well, look how bad they're going to be without him." I don't think it's that simple. I think Tierra Tart certainly helps. I think Sheldon Rankins and BJ Hill can be competent against the run. I also think that the linebackers need to be much better. The ends need to be better. I expect Sam Hubbard to bounce back after dealing with a serious ankle injury and playing through that, and he deserves credit for it. He's going to bounce back and play really well. And the linebackers had their worst year, which stunk because you just paid both of them. I expect that to change. I expect the trust in the secondary to be better, and, and that includes Von Bell coming to town. Now, I've seen some say, oh, well, Dax Hill needs to tackle better. One of the best tackling safeties in the NFL. Don't want to hear it. Him and Battle were both really good tackling last year. Dax Hill had 110 tackles. I think he was the, had the 15th best tackle rate or missed tackle rate among safeties uh, in the NFL. Um, in the, or No, it wasn't safeties. I think it, it might have been 15th best in general, and, and Jordan was 12th. Uh, regardless. Those guys were fine tackling. But I do think overall scheme-wise, they can be much better against the run. I expect them to be better against the run. They're going to have to tweak the way they operate because they're not finding. Tavondre Sweat isn't DJ Reader. You could sign Tier Tart and Calias Campbell. None of those guys are DJ Reader. And guess what? They would have had to adjust anyway because DJ Reader might not have been DJ Reader, at least early on coming back from that injury. And that's just the reality of things. The moment he got hurt, they weren't going to find the next DJ Reader even a Christian Wilkins is not that from a run game standpoint. He's just not. So they're, they were going to have to adjust all along, and that's what they're going to have to do. Hey, uh, I, people are getting a little rowdy in the chat here. What, what, Collins, what are we, what are, what's the problem? Collins. I, I, no, he didn't say anything necessarily directly wrong here. I'm not here to like boot people that aren't necessarily Bengals fans, but like, okay, what are we what saying? Say? Who, who the heck is James? I mean, that's fair. I ask that question almost every day. Um, Joe Burrow sucks. Okay, fine. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna suspend you for that. But like, if you're just gonna rile people up to do it, like, I hope you're enjoying yourself. I don't know. What, what do you want? Why I'm are gonna you keep giving an eye him on. time? I, th- I thought you were talking about. I'm like not trying to give him time. time. I just want people to clarify and tell me what's going on. If I need to get this guy out of here, I'll do it. But like, come on. Uh, it just it's silly. Um, yeah. There we go. <laughs> I'm not flashing that the, new chat up. Uh, the Eagles never spare any expense to remain competitive for a championship. Right. That's why Bengals willing to take all that. It, some some high highs and low lows though I, I don't know I, I I it's fair though it's a fair assessment. Hold on a damn second. The Eagles, we're talking about Eagles and championships. Is this what we're doing now? Not not in the history because of sports. Like what what what's the point? Like are we talking about the last five? They years? never. What are we saying? Yeah. Okay. So Nick Foles got on a heater and they won one. Part right. of that had to do with Bill Belichick being an idiot, not playing Malcolm Butler. Right. And. Tom Brady throws for 500 yards and it's not enough. Like, okay, that's the one outlier. Like, let's be real here. You, you kind of choked last year in the Super Bowl. Like, chill out a little bit here. Chill out a little bit. I didn't see Joe Burrow fumbling the ball, throwing in pick sixes or whatever. What was it? It was a pick six or a fumble, fumble for a touchdown, whatever it was with Hurts. Like, chill, Eagles fan. Just chill a little. Good Lord. Next uh, time, yell, Tally Fry. Next time, yell. Or, or run the 40 yard dash and tap me on the shoulder so we can say hey 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 we got someone offering to pay. Oh, you're gonna pick up james what the hell am i gonna do temporal like what are we doing here like now i'm See. getting you know what actually Appreciate i'll take it I, I actually i will i will accept your offer that means i don't have to drive i can just drive solo or get my own uber i'm okay with that this is a fair offer i appreciate you um yeah it's all let's about see you here uh <laughs> your buddy owns the foaling place that's cool fouling Bowling? No, it's bowling. It's bowling. So bowling. Bowling and football. Foaling. Thanks. Uh, At least one of us. Media guide to it, by the way, the pronunciation? A, me- a media guide. <laughs> I'm doing the play by play on Sunday. For are, real. Like, are, are you serious? Like, welcome in to St. Taddy's Day. Are you? Tattoo artist number one like, is tat, tat, tatting up Andrew Fox Miller. I am not getting tatted up. Um, Why not? I'm what submit a super chat and ask me that I question, might. James. We got to get through these. I might. Uh, you're hey, not. You're I, not going to. I'm going to be like, hey, can you give me this this CBT yeah. logo real quick? Yeah. Hey, speaking of CBT logos, you got to get one up behind you. Don't forget about that. 
Actually, I'm not. Before you start, before you notice start that nothing's your, changed. Before you start inking your body with this, all I'm saying. Uh, Von Bell auctioning James. What? I would never auction him. What why, why are you trying to say? Wait, Ryan? what does Von Bell have to do that? What am I missing? I What's the connection? I, I don't know. I don't know. Love you anyway, Ryan. Thank you. <laughs> thank Yeah, thank you, Ryan. I appreciate it. Uh, Von Bell. Oh, maybe he, maybe, maybe he wants, he's trying to, the two it, different Maybe topics. he wants to know about Von Bell. All right, so yeah. let, let's start. One, I'm never auctioning the Power Rangers masks. Two, uh, it, it will take a SWAT team to get me to auction off these Power Ranger masks, and maybe not even that. That was point two. You could have just made that part of point one. I'm never going to auction it, and it would take... Name that show. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm reading the comments. What? what Michael Scott was like, it would take, it'll take oh, a SWAT team a, an office to get me yes. out of this office, and maybe yeah. not even then. A SWAT team would totally be able to take you out, Michael. All right, anyways. That's a fun one. Uh, Von Bell, I think he's going to start. We're an hour in, I, I and we'll see. I think we're going to hear from him soon, and we'll we'll post it uh, right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk. I think he has a really good shot to start, and I could see it being him and Geno Stone, Jordan Battle playing regularly, Dax Hill. I think he's going to be like this hybrid guy that guards tight ends and can do a bunch of different things, and it's it's really interesting the dynamic because I don't think Vaughn's going to play like eighty percent of the snaps. But he may start and play 60%. And then Geno Stone may play 94%. So then you have 46% to divvy up between Jordan Battle and Dax Hill. I like the Von Bell signing because he was free. It makes sense. From a communication standpoint, he's going to help. From a leadership standpoint, he's going to help, including Geno Stone, who's young. Former seventh rounder, had a really good year last year, but needs to continue to build and grow and, and uh, build as a player and, and become the player that he can be because he has not reached his ceiling yet as a player. And Vaughn can help all of those things, but he's going to have to help on the field. And so I think Vaughn is going to start. I think he's going to play a lot. And, and I think these other guys are going to have to earn their their playing time along him and Gino. I, I really do. I think that's, that's what you're looking at, which is it's a bummer in a way because you're talking about first and third round picks. I also think that uh, it could be good for them to have a veteran like um, like Von Bell and, and even like Gino Stone. I think Gino Stone, I, I was talking with Paul Daner Jr. today about this, and it's a really good thing is – Geno Stone's a seventh rounder that worked his way up, was doubted a lot, had some uh, plenty of adversity early in his career. Well, Tyson Anderson's dealing with some of that adversity now. And Tyson is, I think, a really good player and someone who can be in, in the NFL. You're going to look up and he can be in the NFL for 10 years. He needs to get healthy. He's coming back from that ACL. And so I think having Geno Stone around, someone who's done that, come from seventh round. Tyson wasn't a seventh rounder, but late round guy into a, a second contract and probably a big third contract in a couple of years. That's uh, it's a good example to have. Um, I'm going to, okay. At this point, we're going to rapid fire. We said we were going to go 30 minutes, 40 at most. That was our That's exchange fine. We have, message. We have so seven, like, we have seven minutes. We'll get to yep. some super Let's chats. Go. And we'll, we'll I'm, I'm, some of these are going to be just, we don't even need to respond, but also what up? Um, there's going to be some that say, why, why are you commenting? Like we're moving, we're moving. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, Marquise, I got you, man. I, that's, that, that's the goal is to try to get it right. And I, I do think that as far as being in sync with what their goals are, what, what their thought process is, we try to be locked in. It's not like Mike Brown's calling me like, Hey, we're about to, uh, we're about to make a move at running back. And we're thinking of adding two defensive tackles. We really like Makai back then. I wish he would, by the way. So, Mike, if you're watching, Duke, if you're watching, Katie, please do that. That would be much, much easier. But uh, you just got to kind of – it's part of the job. And, and so far, so good. A lot of people have done that, though. But I, I think this beat and the people that covered is really strong. We don't we don't need to spend a minute talking about this one, James. But I do want to flash it up. It, it did come up early on. We, He's getting a swole on in the gym right now. Uh, <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, let's see here. The uh, oh yeah, no, we 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 actually addressed that one already. But yes, um, we don't know. We'll see. Hope, it, hopefully it soon. Close. I'm checking my I'm um, checking my notifications now. Let's just make sure. I, I, you know what? I really liked this one, Colin, and I sat on it since 10 46 PM. I don't, James, don't spend, don't even spend 30, like, no, I, I, it's not you, Colin, it's James. I can't have him talking for the next four minutes about this one thing because we have a lot to get through. But it's, a, I, I understand where this is coming from. I understand the vibe that you're, you're catching here. I get it. I'm going to say that, but that's what I'm going to leave you with as well. So, yeah, it's, 
It's interesting because I and I, and I get the logic. I think the Texans are insane. <laughs> okay. I, All right. Stop. 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 We have so much to get through. I, I wish I could have spent an entire live stream about that take, James. What? I can't. It's not even a take. It's true. Why? Why would you do that? It, it's it's insane. But they even did. If you think, I don't even know. If you think, even if you think Joe's really good, you want to know why you do that? Because you whiffed on Saquon Barkley. You got desperate. Your starter last year signed elsewhere in Devin Singletary, and they looked up and they didn't feel like they had a running back. And they had money to spend. And then you flip it. I'm going to give you exactly what happened. And then Peter Schaefer uh, is Joe Mixon's agent. He finds out that the Bengals are cutting Mixon. And he's like, well, bleepity bleep. I can't believe this, even though he should have just watched Cincinnati Bengals talk because he would have known months ago that that was going to happen. And so he finds a trade partner. So his client doesn't have to lose his contract, which is really smart. He's a really good agent, clearly. And he found a desperate team like the Texans who said, oh, not only will we trade for that, but we will completely rework his deal. We'll rip it up and we'll give him an extension if you get the Bengals to trade him. I'm sure that's what happened. I don't know for sure. It's not like Peter told me, hell, I was on that list. Like, I, I don't know that for sure. I know they weren't happy about getting cut, of course. They felt like it was uh, caught them off guard, which, again, I have no idea how that's the case. But that's what happened is the, the the Texans got desperate. They were looking around in, in free agency and they were like, we don't want to sign AJ Dillon as our primary back. So they went and they got Joe Mixon. And part of it is that I think the NFL is really low on this running back class from a bell cow standpoint. That's fine. We'll see how he does. I do think he's going to be fine in Houston, it, especially if you're looking at the, the overall numbers. Like a lot of people that have defended Mixon have said, all right, well, 1400 yards from scrimmage. That's fine. If you look at it that way, you'll probably look up and he'll be solid for the Texans la next year. Uh, if you're drafting him in a PPR league, I think he'll probably be pretty solid for you in fantasy football. Overall I, impact of winning, I don't think paying him that money was smart at all. That's all. Um, By the way, good for him. Get your money. Everyone should want to be overpaid, not underpaid. Never in life do you want to be underpaid, and usually you are. Everybody usually is. Want to be overpaid. That's all. All right. Um, I was going to rapid fire through these, but James, you talked for, I don't know, 45 minutes, and now we have super chats we have to clear through really quickly here. Um, LSU class reunion New Orleans in February. Hey, if James has I, his way, we might uh, we might add some more LSU in, in free agency. We'll see. And, you know, Clyde. Um, so, I, yeah, hey, that would love it. In fact, I will put this out there right now. It might be the last time I say it for the remainder of the offseason and certainly the remainder of the regular season, if it happens. There were talks, James and I, there was a point, James, when we were talking about going to um, Arizona when we thought there was a shot at uh, Super Bowl, and it didn't happen, obviously. I can only imagine New Orleans, we might we might tag team down there. We'll see if it happens. I would love that. It would be a lot easier than going out west, I'll tell you that right now. Um, it's pretty similar, but yeah. Done Michael, before. thank you so much. Who's the most improved team so far in the AFC North? Who is the least most valuable uh, free agent, I suppose, so far of any team? They, oh, man. It's tough. It, it, it's tough. I, I, I would say most this. Improved? All right, so they're all, they've all improved. I think the Steelers are really interesting. I don't love that they spent a lot of money on Patrick Queen, but the fact that they were able to get Russell Wilson for nothing. Like, they got him for the Von Bell deal. It's the same thing. It's a hell of a deal because he's better than what they have. I don't think he's great, but he's certainly better than what they have, even if it's a smidge better. I think the Ravens got worse. Trading Morgan Moses just is weird to me. They didn't get a lot for him. I love that trade for the Jets. The Browns, they're fine. I, I think the Jerry Judy trade is worth it from a risk standpoint because it's fifth and sixth round picks. You do have to pay him $13 million. But I, I think it's worth it. And so it's it's kind of TBD. Like if the Bengals get T.R. Tart and and obviously they're they've got Rankins and you add him to BJ Hill, and then you're able to sign Makai Becton as well. I feel really darn good about what the Bengals have done. And I would probably put them first, assuming, and it goes back to this always, that Joe Burrow's wrist is fine. And I do think it's progressing fine. So it's close. It's easily the best division in football. I think the Ravens. Again, I don't have the full picture of what picture of what they're doing offensive line wise, but that matters to me more than adding Derrick Henry does. DK back again after last night's debauchery that we saw between Joe, myself, James, Jake, Joe Goodberry. That's a lot of J's and just one A. Hey, DK, we were debating on what you were naming yourself after, but appreciate you uh, again showing up and bringing in the super chat. The uh, 
Bengal God gave me. Should we draft defensive lineman in first or second round? We did talk about that a little bit, but uh, ultimately it seems like James, we may more than likely not get the – if we're going to talk – interior we're probably not going to get what we need at 18 and we're going to go for i think there's a shot you know it's byron murphy it's byron murphy at 18 and then after that i think there's multiple guys that they could target at at 49 do they like Tavondre sweat that early feels a little early i I think the nfl is going to let him drop a bit but you know there there are multiple what there are multiple guys like you know michael hall jr out of ohio state is someone that i like uh, the kid out of Florida State, uh, Fisk, Braden Fisk, is, is someone that, that you certainly look at as someone could come in right away and potentially make an impact. So there are guys that I think they could target for sure. Um, let's uh, okay. So we've got a, a quick moment. Let's. I, I I've been queuing these. Honestly, I don't even know. All right, let's just go. Um, yes, mix and press conference, heartbreaking. Um, uh, yeah, I, that was that was that was weird. Yeah, I, I right? think I think he's really sad. <laughs> You know, um, yeah, sure. It, it, I mean, it's got to it, be shell shocked. I like that is the human element of it. Like, I, I this idea that I'm there, there's a, a huge part of it, right? A hu- huge human element part of it. I will say this though that contract that he got is going to help make up for it. it really oh, is. I, yeah. And, and and I don't, I don't mean this in a he, a, he, he wasn't going to get that here. No, he wasn't. I, and I don't mean, I don't mean this in a mean spirited way. Like, I did not feel bad for him at all when I saw those numbers. And I, I mean that in a good for him way. But yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, look at him. All right. It worked out for everybody in that regard. Um, he got a Tyler third Boyd, contract. yeah, that's going to be a tough uh, goodbye. I agree. Uh, he got a third contract as a running back. Boyd is going to be tough. I agree. He's had to sacrifice a lot of his career. No it's news on a new punter that I'm aware of. No, no new punter. Brad Robbins. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, these Thanks, are Ryan. All just, yeah, appreciate, appreciate you. you. Um, Corner draft, I would assume. I mean, it, we're talking. If it's not going to be draft, it's going to be a one-year minimum. Yeah, deal. I, 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 I think they could add a corner. Um, exactly who? I, I'd have to pull it up and look here because you're no, right. We don't Fuller have time just, for that, James. Don't look. Fuller, don't it, it up. No, I know. But Fuller <laughs> just Fuller just uh, just signed. The cornerback market isn't moving though, so I do think that they have a shot at uh, at signing a veteran, and I think they will. Real talk. Need to have you two, Joe Goodberry and Jake. Let's go do a live chat in the summer on random topics when there's nothing football. So there's always Dude. football to talk about. But if that were to happen, I will tell you it's probably late June, early July. So that is a uh, that is feedback we will take. Appreciate you, um, Thomas. All right. Uh, <laughs> The uh, are you a Bengals fan or you just covered? We've talked about this. They're actual, and I know it's buried in live streams in years past. Uh, I'll make this one quick. Can I can I just say it on behalf of you, James? I'm not going to be like out of line here. I feel like sure. We'll see if you can say it. Do just put it together. James, born and raised Cincinnati, one of his favorite players ever, Chad Johnson. We'll leave it at that. DK uh, back again. My goodness. Uh, I may be biased. I feel like we got better this offseason with more to come. So why are major outlets saying we had the worst? Who's saying we had the worst, by the way? And like, and I ask that because I don't. I'm not. I'm. I wouldn't doubt that it's being said, but I haven't seen it being said. Yeah, I don't know. I, I really don't know who's saying that. I, I. I think that's that's why I didn't even really answer the AFC North question because the dust hasn't settled enough yet. Like, I, I don't know who's going to land where, and you know, I think if the Bengals do it, land Tart and Becton, you can make that argument because there's a very real possibility that their pass rush is much, much better next year. Uh, and uh, yeah, so they're a little worse against the run on paper. But if you just think Lou Anarumo knows what he's doing, then they're going to figure that part out too. I think they will. Um, by the way, I, I just want to shout out, Colin's been giving us a, uh, play, a, a bit of play-by-play with uh, Bearcats. Nightmare, so Colin. You. Nightmare. Come on, appreciate Bearcats. Oh yeah, John. I said the same thing. So perfect. Yeah, mix and shell shocked at press conference. It did it, the same words. I yeah, exactly. Uh, DJ James too. Seemed, it, James seems like, angry tonight. Yeah. Am I? Continue angry? your thought. Maybe know. it was going to be an angry one, James. I, I, no, I, DJ too. Like DJ, I think they were surprised. Like, it's hard. That's hard. the transition from one city to another, like so abruptly. Yep. Is is wild. Like, and, and when DJ did it, and when DJ did it the first time signing with Cincinnati. He didn't have to go anywhere. He didn't even sign. It was COVID. So he was like, oh, I signed with Cincinnati. He didn't sign for months because everything was shut down. And so it was 
it was one of those things where he had agreed to terms for months. That was when Trey Waynes acted like a baby about it and was like, what if I get hurt? And then he got hurt on the first day of camp anyways. Um, I'm going to throw this up here really quickly. I know we need to wrap here, but uh, if you don't mind handling that real quick, I'm going to go on mute just for once. Emmanuel Acho said we got work. Yeah. I, I'm sure. But what, what's his logic? They lost Jonah? Because he wasn't on when they – they had lost reader yet maybe he was doing it under the assumption that they lose reader i don't know i mean those those shows you have so much time to fill and you have to do it and so again i think there's a reason how we've done an hour and 15 minutes in doing a youtube show versus doing a, a show like that is much much different but like if you're doing that topic i wouldn't want to do that topic yet because i don't know who's got the worst out of all these teams yet ask me again in like a week and i think i'll have a really good idea i the dust hasn't settled. There's still plenty of dust in the air of, of who's going where. Manuel Acho. That's your favorite, Andrew. Sorry. Yeah, you, 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 oh, wait. No, there's another one speak? here. Super Was that speak? I think that's speak. Yes, of course. O-line, in draft, and and free agency. Makai Becton and draft picks. And the draft pick, I would have a draft pick at tackle. I would have an interior draft pick at least. So, I think it's very realistic to expect at least three new linemen in that room, at least three new linemen in that room this year. Um. All right, uh, we got a few here. I'm just gonna th I'm gonna throw up. Uh, by the way, thank you, Bengal God. Appreciate you. The uh, yeah, yes, James absolutely probably would be. Um, and 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 I would probably have to drive him overnight from New Orleans back home to Cincinnati so he get McDonald's before he goes to bed the next day. Um, that's probably how that would go. We've learned how I work as a DD when James is involved. This, this I don't is, even know this, what this means. This is what Nardo. Oh, you're okay. A lot of Fox analysts, I get it. But losing what does that Rita, mean? Mixon. Oh, a lot of Fox analysts are saying we had the worst. I appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. You said Fox. I thought you were talking about me. I was like, what does that mean? No. I got you. Losing Reader, I get. Mixon, I get because people are going to look at the numbers. And again, Okay, fine. Awuzie, I don't really know how you could look at it that way because he he wasn't the same last year. And they're not losing T. There's there's like right. a 1% chance they lose T, and it's because they just hose a team in a trade. That's it. Yeah, and they got so, something out of it. They didn't lose. A, a ton out of yeah. it. Like they will win the trade by so much if they trade T. Higgins that it will be like, oh, my God. It'll be the same feeling you got when you saw that Joe Mixon got $13 million guaranteed in three years, 27 It'll be the same. It'll be like, oh my God, a team did that for T. So I don't know what it is, but the Bengals aren't going to just give him away for whatever most people think the market is a, a second round pick. It's just not happening. Look at that. Uh, uh, Australia, you're, you're muted again. UC is done, according to Colin. That's brutal. You're muted still, Andrew. You, you're, you're just not listening, huh? Sorry. Yeah. No, you, I knew. I muted him again. <laughs> I didn't mute you the last time, but I, I did didn't mute anything. Process. I you don't know why muted. I'm being you muted. Hit, you must have hit the mic. I must have. Um, I, I just want to point out, like exactly, like I've said this before on live streams. Aussie, the fact that anyone out of Australia is a Bengals fan, like that's a huge reason why we even had discussions of starting up this channel. Like knowing that people, like geographically, don't have access to the things that I feel like we, I don't want to say take for granted, but we easily have access to here in the states so i hope you can get something out of this channel and appreciate you uh temporal thank you again i think you left a super chat earlier so appreciate you um oh yeah we're getting more uc stuff all right yeah get john doe out of here what's he up to chicken genius eat it up what oh, i'm not gonna read this okay yeah all right i don't have time for that you're in timeout i don't care um Will they change how they play starters in preseason, James? That is actually a very good question. Not many people have asked that, if at all. I want to address that quickly. Quickly, James. No. No, period. N across the board, no. You said quickly. No. Why would they? I, I Playing Joe clarify. preseason? They want him to be healthy in training camp. Why the hell would you play him in the preseason? Okay. The reason they got off to a slow start last year was because he was not healthy. Why? Because he got hurt in camp. No. Easy. I wouldn't change that either. No, hell no. If anything, they should go lighter. The day one of training camp should be, hey, this is juice box and go to McDonald's with James Day. We're going to see how many chicken nuggets he can eat. And then day two is going to be, we're going to go live on Cincinnati Bengals talk and each one of you is going to get interviewed by James. And then day three is, get my point. If anything, you go the other way. 
because you need to get nine healthy and, and ready to go and fully healthy always going into week one. That's got to be the goal. We got actually f fans from all over the world. This is crazy. This is Let's awesome. go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. Hey, I only Cullen, you are the ambassador for Bearcats. I need you to confirm this. Nate, I appreciate you. And I'm going to give you They lost. They were down ten, dude. It's okay. You're you're busy looking stuff up. I'm not I didn't look it up. I just assume it's over. All right. Let's wrap this. What do you say? We went way longer than we expected. Yeah, I, I didn't know if we had any other super chats. I was just making sure. All right. Uh an hour and twenty minutes. We've run back to back to back to back. Shout out to you, Tanner. Oh, thank you, and Clay. Clay, uh, I appreciate you. And and here's here's what's gonna Clay's happen. Clay's just paying to give love, and I, I I man, appreciate you. And Andrew is gonna get some sleep. I'm gonna get <laughs> some sleep. I'm gonna wake him up at like five forty five in the morning after I like left after I've left the gym, and I'm gonna say they are signing bleepity bleep because I just sent some tech. No, yep. point is is when something happens, we're going to be here. And if it's five forty five in the morning, we're gonna do it. If it's six forty five, if it's nine forty five. It, all day Friday, we're going to have you covered. If this goes into the weekend, like Lel Collins, I'll take my ass to Kenwood Town Center, and we're going to have you covered. So please, please, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you for all of the super chats as I hit the mic. Thank you for all the super chats. Thank you for dealing with me and Andrew's banter back and forth. And for Andrew Foxmeller, I'm James I'm Rapine. In. As always, what? No, you said for Andrew Foxmeller. It's just weird to hear you say it, and I'm not editing the video as you're saying it. Uh, just tuned in. Good after you are Jeremiah, and you will. And I appreciate you. Leave a comment Thanks, on the Jeremy. video itself, not the live chat. Leave a comment on the video. One of us will respond. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And until next time, thank you so much for watching Cincinnati Bengals talk.